All right, this is the first video I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna show you the proper way to bias your tube amp. This is a Jet City 22H. Um, uses EL84 output tubes. Uses a uh, pair. And what I use to make it extremely safe and uh, um, almost hands-free to, to keep you from getting electrocuted. Um, I use the Bias Pro products. Uh, basically, it has a one ohm precision shunt resistor in it. Uh, you take and you pull one of your tubes out, plug in the uh, bias probe, plug your tube into the top of the bias probe, and then you have two lead wires that go to a multimeter. You want to set your multimeter to millivolts, not milliamps. You're able to do this because of the one ohm shunt resistor. Uh, if you get a good one, uh, they'll send you instructions on how to do it, uh, like this one here. You get uh, two full pages that tell you how to do it, why to do it. Um, you can get these from a guy on eBay, and I'll give you those here in just a little bit. Um, first things first, a uh, little disclaimer warning here. Um, if you've never done amp work or electrical work of any type, um, you probably don't want to do this alone get somebody to help you do it um, on the underside of this amp I'll take and uh, turn it over All right. now then on the underside of this amp you have uh, capacitors that hold uh, lethal amounts of voltage. Uh, if you touch the wrong thing in here, it's it's a 99% uh, fact that you're probably going to die. Uh, and I, I can't stress that enough. If if you're not uh, careful and uh, watch what you're doing, you're going to get hurt and get hurt bad. Uh, even the best amp techs in the world. Uh, have been bitten. Uh, Gerald Weber, for instance, there's a YouTube video online. Uh, he's adjusting something and his fingers touch the wrong thing and he gets shot pretty bad. And it, you can tell it literally scares the hell out of him. Uh, the best thing to do when you're working on an amplifier is you want to keep one hand behind your back and if you gotta touch anything in here and you just absolutely gotta use your fingers Make sure you got one hand behind your back and only one hand inside the amplifier. The best thing to do is put it on something that's non-conductive, such as a speaker cabinet. Uh, that way it doesn't ground out straight to you, it doesn't ground off to anything else. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is, once you get inside your amp, look for where your power tubes plug up which would be here and here on this amp. All right, and if you look around, there should either be an adjustment screw that looks like a flat head will fit it, or there will be a little wheel, which is that little black wheel right there. And on this one, it even states bias right beside it. Um, that is your bias adjustment. Whether you roll it forward, roll it back, it's either going to turn the bias down or it's going to turn the bias up. Um, now, what you're going to want to do, you'll have to look it up for depending on which tube type you're using, you're going to have to look it up. Uh, there's stuff all over the internet, just Google it. Um, you got to know which one of these contacts in here is your plate voltage. First thing you want to do is measure your plate voltage. So, in your multimeter, you're going to turn your multimeter to volts AC. No, I'm sorry, volts DC. Anyway, you're going to take, and uh, let's just take the Jet City here for instance. Right down in here, you can see there's a little bolt there. 
um, because the chassis is painted all the way around it's hard to find a place on here that you can ground to. Uh, the best kind of probe to use is a alligator clip probe. Let me pull the rubber back a little bit. Well these here. That way you can clip it on that bolt in there and once you let it go it's on there and it's plugged into the multimeter. Next thing you want to do is you want to take the hot end of your multimeter and you want to take and touch it to the contact that goes to your plate. All right. You want to measure the plate current. That's how you can adjust your bias properly. Um, when you get to the uh, when you get your plate current, you need to take and write it down on a piece of paper. Uh, keep that handy. The easiest way to adjust your bias is to take and go on, on uh, the Weber bias calculator. And I'll give you the address and all that here in just a minute. All right. So let's say, for instance, uh, I have my bias probe hooked up on the back side. Um, got my tube plugged into it. First thing I want to do is turn the amplifier on. I want to leave the standby off and uh, turn the amplifier on. All right. You want to leave it on for 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, give your heater filaments time to, to heat the tubes up properly. And then come back in and uh, flip the bias or the standby switch and leave the room for I don't know 30 minutes to an hour and uh, basically what that does is that gives the tube time to adjust because if you just turn it on and hook your bias up to it then it's going to jump all over the place uh, let's say you set it at 19.5 uh, if you take and come back 30 minutes later it's going to be different so it's, it's always a good thing to let it sit there for 30 minutes to an hour. No, over an hour is not, I mean, there, there's no need in that. Um, another thing you want to keep in mind is you're always going to have a load on the amplifier whenever you have it on. So what I do when I put it on top of the speaker cabinet, I hook my speaker cabinet up to the amplifier. Simple enough. Uh, that gives you your load. All right. Now what you want to do is you want to watch your multimeter. Uh, set it to metal volts and uh, what you're going to do is you're going to have your bias probe plugged up once you have your plate voltage and it's going to be sitting there if you just got a Jet City amp if it's the Jet City 20 or the Jet City 22H that uses the EL84 tubes your bias is probably going to be sitting around 15, 16 somewhere along in there and it's bias super cold um, so you're probably going to want to adjust it. It's easy to do as long as you're careful. Okay, so the way we adjust it is this little wheel right here. And I really don't like sticking my fingers in there. So uh, I'm going to use my uh, probe. Anyway, this little black wheel right here is your bias. If you roll it down, I believe the way I've got it sitting, if you roll it down, your bias goes down. If you roll it up, your bias goes up. You never want to touch anything in here with your fingers. Um, you, you, you can get shocked or killed and it's just not good. The best thing to do is if you have an extra probe, use an extra probe because it's insulated. Uh, chopstick works. Um, uh, wood pencil. Uh, as long as you take the uh, metal piece off the end that holds the eraser on. Uh, a big ink pen. If you take a big ink pen apart, just use the plastic part of it. Works great. It's not going to conduct electricity. Uh, what I do, and I should have known right now, I can't find it. Um, oh, there it is. What I have is electrician's tools. And basically, they're screwdrivers that are non conductive. The handle is uh, plastic. And then the actual shaft is a non-conductive material. That way, um, you, you don't get any current going through you. That's the best way to do it. Uh, if you don't have that, get a chopstick, a uh, pencil, something. Um, if you happen to have one, uh, a bias adjustment that's shaped like a flathead, shape your chopstick into the shape of a flathead. It, it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to turn these things. Um, 
Anyway, that's the main point to get across. Now, also, while you're inside your amplifier, let's see if I can uh, zoom in here a little bit. There we go. Um, you want to take, while you're in here, since you've already got it out, go ahead and look at all your contacts, uh, especially around your preamp tubes, around your output tubes, um, your resistors, uh, all your pots. Look in there and, and make sure you don't see any burnt spots or uh, uh, loose or faulty uh, soldering joints. And it couldn't come from the factory like it, or it could be a malfunction with the amp. And that's one of the things you want to check when you've got it open. You've already got it open. Go ahead and look at it. Make sure you got everything checked out fine. Uh, anyway, now, once you get done in here, you want to take, flip your amplifier back over. Keep it in mind to keep your hands out of it. And let's say you had your bright bias probe on this tube here. Okay. You want to take, turn everything off, pull your bias probe out, take the tube off the bias probe, replace the tube back into the tube socket, then come over to your next tube and do the same thing. And what you're doing is you're double checking. There's no need to have a double bias probe or a quad bias probe. It takes just a little bit more time and you can do it with a single bias probe. Um, really not a whole lot to it. Um, now if you want to go ahead and spend the extra $30, $40 to buy another bias probe and then spend another $50, $60 for a, a box that you plug them into, that way you can plug it all into one multimeter, that's totally up to you. Anyway, uh, another thing you want to do is when you order tubes, uh, you can order them from Musician's Friend, uh, the Tube Depot, the Tube Store, uh, Euro tubes, any of those. Um, <clears throat> the main thing you want to do is make sure that you get a matched pair. That's always important. You want to get a matched pair. Um, another thing that's important is your old tubes that you take out, don't throw away. Keep them. Uh, you might need them. Keep them as a backup. Um, when you take a tube out, pull the... Uh, spraying hanger here off. When you pull your tube out, don't just pull straight up on it. Take and rock it around and slowly pull up on it and it'll come out very easily. Do the same thing with putting it back in. Line your pins up, slowly rotate it, push it back in till it seats. There it is. Take and pull your spraying hanger back up, put it back on, you're good to go. Um, Anyway, once you take and you bias, make sure that your bias is the same on the other tube. You want to take, come back, shut everything off, take and reinsert your amp chassis back into your amp cabinet. The easiest way to do this is to take your amp cabinet, turn it upside down. If you'll notice on each side, you have a little leg of wood there. Let your amp chassis ride that leg of wood then take your screws that are on top and push them down till they meet the amp chassis. Then screw them up accordingly. Um, let's take and uh, bear with me just a moment. Let me find the web address and I'll get you everything you need to know to buy us your own amp. wrote this down for you, that way if you can't read it, you can just look at it. Uh, there's the 
Weber bias calculator. It's www.webervst.com forward slash T-U-B-E-S-1 forward slash C-A-L-C-B-I-A-S dot H-T-M. That'll take you straight to the bias uh, or uh, Weber bias calculator. Works great. Uh, if you want to get the same kind of bias probe that I have, uh, they work great. They're called Bias Pro. If you go on eBay, you can buy them from a guy who goes by the screen name of Deja Blue, D E J A B L E U 95. I hope this has helped you. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment and I will do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.